we're back. I'm Dr. Laura Murillo, President of the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and we're here with Houston legend Marcus Davis. He was talking to us a little bit about his restaurants, uh, all of the great things that he's been doing here in the Houston area, including serving as a motivational speaker, being recognized nationally, and at the end of the day, making really great food. Above all, he puts family first. And we were talking about his three children and their paths and uh, your wife and your mom and just the, the family uh, connection to your business, how important that's been to you and how it keeps you going, Marcus. You know, family is, 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 is huge for me. Um, I got into this business as a result of my father's passion for great food and for fellowship. He was an educator by profession, but he was a musician and a chef by passion. Okay. And there were plenty of Sundays that, you know, our house would be full of folks because they wanted to come over to see what Jerry Davis was cooking mm -hmm. on that Sunday. And so yeah. I picked up on that. Yeah. Uh, that I did. I didn't. I didn't pick up on his cooking. I picked no. up on creating the environment. The that, hospitality. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Bringing, folks together, bringing folks together. And you thought, okay, how do I turn yeah. this into a business? Yeah. What was your first job? Uh, ironically, my first job was, was was with my father, who okay. he, as I said, he was an educator, but he had a part-time uh, business or a side business of catering. Oh. And so my first. The first place I got hired, the first place I got fired was at my, at my <laughs> it really, it really was. Uh -huh. And so I worked there for him, you know, doing banquets. I put on yeah. my little bow tie, my little tuxedo shirt. Uh, we had to be eight, nine, ten years oh, old. Okay. Um, I think I was about 10 or 11 when I got fired. Uh -huh. uh, I was, a, a, my dad, my dad didn't uh, have uh, a lot of money to, to, to leave us, but uh -huh. the, the intangibles that he left for us, you know, are, are so immeasurable. You know, this idea of, uh, having a great work ethic is one. Uh -huh. And so he found me slacking one day and he said, hey, uh, if you keep slacking, you're not going to go on the next job. Next job came around. You know, he rounded up my brothers and my cousins. Yeah, and you had your bow tie in I, hand. I, was, I was ready to go. And he looked at me and said, where are you going? And he told me, he said, I told you, if you didn't put in the work, you weren't coming. And so he closed the door and I had to go <laughs> sit back down on the couch. Yeah. So, yeah. But fast forward, you know, 20 years later, 30 years later, yeah. um, uh, 20 years later, I was able to uh, fulfilled the dream of opening the restaurant. I called my father and I said, "Hey, you got to come and you know work with me on mm -hmm. putting great flavors in 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 the mouths of others." Mm -hmm. And he came aboard, right? And yeah. it, it worked out well. Oh, that's nice. So everyone knows Breakfast Club is yeah. with a K. The, the Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club yes. is with a K. Yes. And Cultures with a K. Yes. Why? That reason right there. It gets your attention. So when I get when I when I started the restaurant. Um, or was working on the business plan, people kept asking me, what's gonna set you apart? What's your niche, what's your niche? So I went to find a number of different ways to make the concept stand out, right? Okay. So one was, the Breakfast Club is a coffee shop. I don't know if you know that, yeah. but uh, we're actually a coffee shop and we all we opened at the height of the coffee shop rave, right? Okay. Uh, so we do the caramel macchiatos, the white raspberry mochas. Okay. We have six blends of roasted coffee. And the idea was to be able to mix a coffee shop with a place that served fried pork chops for breakfast. In 2001, that just wasn't happening in, in, in the city. So uh, we wanted to, to fill that void. So I looked for a number of different ways, putting fish and grits on the menu. You couldn't find fish and grits on the menu in 2001, not in the city of Houston. Mm -hmm. So that was another niche that we wanted to do. So the other thing I looked at was I looked at the menu and I decided, hey, it'd be a great idea uh -huh. if we changed all the hard seas to K's yes. as part of our signature. Just so people recognize so, that. And he did and, it, and, and it worked. 17 years later, and, and it still worked. worked. And worked. people ask about it every day. Yeah. yeah. So I know that uh, one of the other things that you enjoy doing, and I enjoy listening to you, yeah. is that you're on the radio. And, yes. you know, uh, that's a, such such an important uh, part of who you are and yeah. that message. And clearly why the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce has, you know, embarked on CBS, on Cube, uh, with Univision, because we understand the power of the media right. and telling our stories and making sure we have guests on. What, what's that experience been like for you? So it, it has been a fantastic experience. It's a labor of love. Yes. Uh, I absolutely love the opportunity to get up in the morning and go to my pulpit and share the sermon that I need to yes. share with the congregation that's listening. Just get it off, all off get, your get, chest. Get it all off my chest. And it's been you know, building through the week, it, it, I imagine, through, through right? The week. And, and, and the beauty of it is I'm on the ground every day. Yes. Uh, I hear different stories. I hear different opportunities to, to for other people to flourish through someone else's story. Mm -hmm. And so being able to collect 
those stories and share them with the general public is, is absolutely fascinating. Yeah. And so it's it's a passion of mine. It's, it's funny how I got into radio, uh -huh. um, how I got on air. I was invited by my mentor to come and talk about my business. Yes. And she asked me to stay on as her, you want to come back? I said, how often do you want me to come back? She said, keep cutting. Keep and so I, be back. I became her sidekick and then yeah. that evolved into the show that I do now. Yeah. But I had harbored a desire to be on the radio for years. Okay. I grew up working in fast food, okay. and so I perfected my radio voice by working the drive through at fast food restaurants. You know what? <laughs> like I say, it doesn't matter what job you have, be the best, <laughs> be the at, best it. at it. And it yeah. sounds like you've been the best yeah. at it, and we are so proud to have you with I've us. I've been at drive through Thank you for choosing the Breakfast Club. Would you like? And, and so it would go uh, on and on and on. No, well, thank you for having me on. I absolutely. appreciate it. Absolutely. We're so proud of you and your yeah. family and your success as an entrepreneur and also uh, just the positive energy that you put out there. And uh, we we're happy to have you as one of our Houston Glad legends. To be Congratulations. Thank you for Thanks for joining us on the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Houston Legends. I'm Dr. Laura Murillo, and we'll see you next time.